Sirocco, let me first start uh, by the structure of the deal. Can you explain to us the 49% stake acquired by the PIF? Uh, there's a 23% coming from the Italian Sovereign Wealth Fund. How about the other 26%? It all comes from your four sisters? Just to understand more the structure. It's mostly, mostly from my four sisters who are not involved in the business, yes. Okay, so the 26%, the rest of it comes from your four sisters. All right. Yeah. Now, can you tell us, please, what is the purpose of the deal and what the PIF can bring to the table? Well, the, uh, the purpose of the deal was that I did have uh, this 23% um, owned by CDP, Casa di Positi Presti, in Italy. Uh, and uh, they'd been with us for... Um, for eight, nearly nine years. And at, uh, at some stage in the not too distant future, they, they would have wanted to come out. And I thought the, the, uh, about a year ago, I started thinking about this and also the fact that the four sisters were not involved would have liked to have come out. Um, and so I decided to go to the market and, and uh, that is how uh, PIF got involved. Um, and they asked if they could uh, deal with us exclusively, which we we agreed to, and that's how we came to 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 a deal. From from um, from my point of view, I need um, a long term partner uh, who's very strategic in their approach, which I think PIF uh, very much is, um, and uh, um, who could uh, who could help and support me. So going back slightly on. On the other 26%, part of part of uh, PIF's investment is an injection of, of cash into the company, and so that takes up a proportion of the of the shares as well. The the so um, um, and having having PIF alongside us, um, uh, you know, uh, strengthens the visibility of the company. Um, and this, uh, and 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 strengthen its overall as 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 future uh, partners and investors um, uh, will 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 consider it a very solid solid business. Mm -hmm. um, so it will help us very much in in our expansion plans, um, and also with the with the uh, capital injection will help to accelerate some of our existing development uh, pipeline and also. Uh, the refurbishment of some of our existing Sir Rocco, uh, how much cash was injected by the PIF? And correct me if uh, I'm wrong, uh, the value of the deal uh, in total, is it £686 million? Pounds? The, 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 the sums have not uh, been officially announced, so I can't, uh, I can't answer that question. Am I almost uh, close to but, it? But they're generally they're figures in the in 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 the in in the marketplace, um, which I suppose uh, relate to those to the the figure that you mentioned. Yes. Okay, so it's close. And how much cash was injected by the PIF? Again, I'm not allowed to say. Okay. Okay. I'm so uh, you spoke about the partnership. How do you see this partnership evolving in the near future from a strategic point of view and also operational? And is there any conditions that were put? No, the normal con conditions which a major sh uh, um, uh, minority shareholder would, would have. So obviously there, um, you know, there's certain levels of authority that the management has above which you have to go to the joint board. The the um, um, there's nothing uh, abnormal to what would normally be in place in this type of deal. Uh, it gives it gives the management um, a, 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 a considerable degree of freedom to get on and run the business, which is very important. Um, and. Uh, uh, and obviously, there's you know the the whole the strategy for the company uh, and annual budgets and so on will be discussed at board level and agreed, and then management team will have to implement them. Okay, um, so so in what capacity will you be involved, and at what level, you specifically? 
I will be involved, I continue to be involved as I am now. I'm chairman and chief executive. Mm -hmm. uh, I've committed to, uh, to doing at least the next uh, five years uh, in, in that role. Uh, I will continue to drive the company forward. Um, and uh, I'm, I have great ambitions for the company. And I think having PIF as a partner will certainly help us to grow faster. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and maybe even in a more international way. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the expansions. Uh, it was said that 2024 and 2025, there will be three new hotels in the region, one of them in Dubai, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what about the other two? Will the other two be, uh, will be in KSA in Saudi? And if yes, where exactly are you eyeing in Saudi? Is Al Ula part of the uh, project? The, I know I think there's nothing there's nothing uh, because effectively what was talked about was uh, things already in the pipeline that there's a, a hotel in Milan which will open in 25 there's a hotel in Sardinia on the Costa of Zeralda which will open in 25 there's a Rocco 40 house in Milan which are service departments which will, which will open uh, next year and there's the Dubai property well, we're also discuss uh, at advanced stage of discussing on a Naples on a Naples property and a number of other projects uh, in Italy. The, the, as far as uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is concerned, um, I'm very interested to explore the possibilities there. Uh, I hadn't, I was in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh recently for the conference, but I hadn't been for five years. So I haven't really um, uh, seen uh, what's going on. Obviously, uh, the atmosphere is completely different to, to what it was five years ago. Um, and it's very exciting what's going on uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. It's opening itself up, up to the world in a way where, which I could never have imagined. And, um, and I'm very excited to be part of that. I'm coming over to Saudi Arabia in, um, in January this, uh, this year, the second half of January, and I will spend uh, a week going round uh, and looking at all the opportunities that there are there for hotel development before finally deciding uh, what I want to do there. Um, obviously, um, you know, I know a little bit about about what's going on from the publicity that, it, that it's been given. Um, and certainly the Red Sea area, I think, would be very attractive to my business. But I will look carefully at all the various destinations, uh, tourist destinations, which have been mentioned, which would include the desert, which would include the mountains. Neon, uh, maybe. Al, 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 al Ula, and maybe Neon. And also Riyadh, uh, you know, is the development in the old town of Riyadh, which will, is likely to have hotels as well. So, so I will have a very good look and... Uh, and then decide what the best strategy is for the for the company. Okay. Will the new hotels in the region have the same spirit as all your hotels in Europe? Yes. Well, that the idea of my my business is to do that is to create a special a special spirit. I think all all my hotels have um, a, a friendliness and warmth that many other hotels don't don't have. I think this is. Uh, very much to do with the fact that my family uh, is deeply involved. Obviously, we have a very professional executive team in the company, but uh, but the fact that uh, a family is involved who who cares, who's in the hotels, the staff, um, even at the lowest levels, uh, know us know us well, understand what we want, uh, how we care about looking after our customers. Uh, that that creates a different atmosphere from the sort of usual corporate environment of, of many of the international companies, which are, of course, uh, huge. Mm. Um, and uh, my, my company is still, still one, and I think will be for, uh, for the foreseeable future, one where all, I can touch all the hotels and, and, uh, and be familiar, familiar with all of them and the people in them. And I think that makes a big difference. Mm. I think the interesting thing about uh, Saudi Arabia is unlike the other Gulf states, uh, it has a large indigenous population. Um, and, and therefore, I think you can create 
a much greater local flavor in the hotels than you can in, in the Dubais and Abu Dhabis of this world. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point. Um, going back to uh, Dubai, any idea where the new hotel will be in Dubai? In which area? Yes, it's near. It's it's just next door to the uh, the Bulgari Island. Actually. Jumeirah Bay Island. Uh, yeah, I think that's. I can't remember what it's called, mm. but I think that yeah. And mm. there'll be there'll be three three hotels uh, there, and it's got uh, there's a sort of beach on one side and marina on the other side of this sort of promontory. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's very nice. A very good location. Yeah, it is a very nice location indeed. Uh, last but not least, where do you see the brand positioning uh, of Rocco Forte Hotels in the next 10 years? Huh. Well, I mean, the brand positioning should remain uh, a little bit as it is, you know, and that, and that we try and develop uh, uh, hotels which have an, an individual personality and reflect, um, reflect uh, the location which they're in and also um, you know, which are stylish uh, in the way that they're, they're designed. And I think it's a question of having more hotels and more than actually changing the direction of what we're doing. Obviously, we have to keep up to date uh, with modern trends and, and fashions, um, but uh, we will try and create hotels that are not too big uh, and continue to be intimate and can treat the customer on a personalized basis. Mm. And uh, just uh, a bonus question. Would you ever uh, consider I doing an IPO for Rocco, for Rocco Forte Hotels? Not in the moment. Not in the moment. In the near yeah. future? Yes, anyway, that's, uh, that's something to discuss with my new partners as well. 